today we're going to welcome with us um, Bob Madison. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for inviting me. Bob, before you say anything, yes, everyone should know there are four fire exits. Those doors are unlocked. These doors are unlocked. The front door, I walk right straight through the study. You have the open door into the house, and the door is open out onto the attic. Okay. Thank you. you know where the door is. Thank you. Thanks. Now the Boy Scout will sit down. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Bob Madison. By way of introduction, I'm retired from Pratt Whitney Aircraft in Connecticut. Eight years in engineering, 22 years in finance. After that, I also retired from the state of Massachusetts, from PERAC, the Public Employee Retirement Administration. The state auditor, right, Harry? Yes. Yeah, so, I, fortunately, I get two retirements, plus I get my Social Security. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, John, my talk is about the uh, New Haven, Northampton Canal Greenway. Back in 1825, they finished the Erie Canal in New York, and they came over to Connecticut and Massachusetts. They built a canal from New Haven to Northampton. It ends up right up here, just north of Route 91. Uh, canal basin there. I guess the UMass now has a, uh, a sculling or a boat ramp. But that was Block 32, right at that point, right across the street from uh, Honeypot Road in Hadley. So, in looking at this, what I did is I have a uh, outline of the Connecticut River. In early colonial times, the only way you get into Western New England was obviously the Connecticut River. That was the Route 91 at the Bradley Airport. That is how you would travel. Otherwise, it would take you forever on dirt roads to get up into this area. So South Hadley was the, first, the country's first successful canal for uh, navigation. It was an inclined plane. Now, I'll talk a little bit later too about Westfield, Mass. has a 350th anniversary and asked me to speak. And last month, a lady was talking about Indians in Western Mass. And she happened to mention that William Pynchon, uh, out of Springfield, he had control of this whole area, including Hadley. And if somebody like wanted to trap beaver, you had to go to William Pynchon to get a, a a permission to trap beaver, and presumably the, uh, the beaver trappers had to pay for it way back when in the colonial time frame. Now, of interest, here's South Hadley, there are six locks in South Hadley. Between 1701 and 1873, Hartford and New Haven, every two years, switched back and forth being the capital city. So Hartford had the rights of way to the interior of New England, western New England. New Haven didn't have any rights. So what they decided to do is build a canal from New Haven to Northampton. Now, <clears throat> the canal started here in Southwood, Granby, Connecticut. They started in 1825. There are 28 locks going down to uh, New Haven. Again, in Southwick, Congamon Lakes, there are 32 locks going from Southwick to Northampton. So what we have here is a canal, actually it's Route 10, all the way up to Vermont, dirt road way back when. And then they built the canal, the canal went bankrupt after about 20 years, because of the railroad. They put the, uh, someone invented a steam engine, put the railroad tracks on a towpath, and went all the way to Northampton with it. Now the railroad went bankrupt too, so what they decided to do, is different advocacy groups in each of the 16 towns from New Haven to Northampton decided to pull up the tracks and pave it. And now we have a bike path, so 80 miles long, between New Haven and Northampton. Now it isn't totally complete. Now this kind of shows, this is the New Haven Northampton bicycle path. It's about 90% complete. And Plainville and Southampton is not complete. But between uh, Northampton and Boston is about 40% complete. It's different sections, but it may take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but they ultimately will connect from Northampton to uh, Boston, the white path. So this is a cross uh, section of the, the canal. This is a cross section of the railroad or the bicycle path. 
We started the tide water in New Haven, working up the locks till we get to this point. Here's lock seven in Southington. Here's lock eight in Granby. You get up to South, uh, Southwick and Cogamon Lakes. Then you got to go back down to Westfield, go back up to Southampton, and you work your way down to uh, Northampton. So here we're at 105 feet above sea level, the Connecticut River. We're at 220 feet above sea level in Southwick and zero down at uh, Tidewater in New Haven. How, every time I give one of these talks, people ask me, how does the lock work? <laughs> Simply, you have an enclosed box. They open up a gate. The canal boat goes inside. They shut the gate. They fill it up with water. When the water level reaches this level here, they open up the gate, and the canal boat goes on its way. Very simple. 28 locks in Connecticut, 32 locks in Massachusetts. Now, this is the... Uh, cover of my book. I don't own this book. I signed it 100% of it to the Southwick Historical Society. They get all the money from my book, lectures, donations. And the idea is to purchase signs, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, there are 16 cows. I have 16 watercolors. This is honestly one of my watercolors. But <laughs> When I show them, pardon? You're the artist? Yes. When I show them, though, when I have some watercolors on display, they were actually in color. But in 1825, they didn't have cameras then. It wasn't until the Civil War. At the Civil War time frame, it was black and white. It wasn't really until like World War II that they came out with color. So I decide I don't show color at all. Plus, if I make a mistake in color, you know, it doesn't show up in black and white. It makes it easier. But this here, I'll talk about this. This is Westfield Little River. When I painted this, I was down about here. And I'll probably get into this a little later on. But right here, if you look at the Little River, you see a foundation, stones. And if you look here, there's rapids. Between this foundation and this foundation, it's 40 feet. So I just went 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet. This whole thing is 320 feet long. Now, to be it's important. I went to Westfield High School, graduated in 61. And I live nearby here. But then, way back then, I didn't even realize a canal existed in Westfield. And I'll get into that in a little bit, too. So everybody knows these symbols. Coca-Cola, Tony the Tiger. The idea is, as I mentioned, Southwick Historical Society will donate two signs to each of the 16 towns from New Haven to Northampton. And this is kind of like the same kind of logo that will be on each sign. Now in Connecticut, they like the Farmington Canal. So these signs will go wherever the canal crosses the highway. That's where we'll put these signs. Now, the bicycle path may not cross where the canal crossed, but there are plenty of signs highlighting the bicycle path but not necessarily signs highlighting the canal. So anyways, these are plate aluminum, three, three inch galvanized pipes, 10 feet long, and they're just gonna donate to each town these signs. Now I've been giving these talks for the last couple of years, but it's amazing uh, the interest people have given me. The Republican Plus, New Haven Register, South, uh, various groups, historic societies, libraries, invited me to talk, and I enjoy this. I've given talks to three people in Westfield's 350th anniversary. Of course, it's Westfield, and every month they have a uh, featured speaker. So everybody in Westfield really got a whole about these speakers. Actually, 403 people showed up for my talk. Wow. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I just didn't expect that at all. <laughs> now, when we get to Northampton, I'll talk about how my book is organized. So, <clears throat> But first, New Haven, the canal, starting off in New Haven, Connecticut, and working way, way north. This sailing ship happens to be Amistad, the slave ship. In 1839, the slave ship was in New Haven Harbor. So I decided to put that in the New Haven Harbor. You can't see it here with this, the picture, but there's a canal boat here. Each one of my chapters has a canal boat, and each town had, I picked out something unique. The, the framework, if you will, uh, the canal. 
But there's a base in here. So the tides go up and down. At the right moment, they open up the gates, and the canal boat will go inside or out. Then as the tide rises or lowers, so it'll shut the gate. Then the canal boat could go into the first canal and work their way up. So this is actually a basin. And there's a basin here in Northampton across from <coughs> Honeypot Road in Northampton. There's also a basement where all the uh, canal boats would marshal, if you will, park their, their boats. Now, starting in New Haven, this goes to downtown. It's a little over a mile and a half. My book takes the bicycle as a hiker from New Haven Harbor up to Yale campus. At this point Yale campus, it's a nice shot all the way up to, uh, really up to Westfield. With a little bit in Plainville, Connecticut, they don't have a bike path. They're having a problem with the Pan Am Railroad. The bike, the railroad is right on the canal, which will be right in the bike path. And the railroad doesn't want bicyclists to be bicycle near an active railroad. So this, the uh, New Haven has a multi-million dollar contract to extend the, the bike path along the canal. I guess there's only one house that's a holdout. They don't want the bike path by their house, but they're going to take it over by eminent domain, what I understand. So this is a picture of Dr. Carl Walter was a retired physician at uh, Lowell Hospital. He has created maps from New Haven to Northampton. This here, hopefully everybody can see this, it's kind of pale, but this is New Haven Harbor. This here is where Route 90, 95 is right now. The base that I was talking about is right here. New Haven Railroad Station, Union Station is right here. However, that's in the early 1800s. Move forward, this is the way it looks today. They filled all this in. This again is Route 95. This is the harbor. And the basin was right up here. So a lot has changed in New Haven. Next town up is Hamden. Uh, again, from Yale campus all the way to actually Westfield. It's all nicely paved or well marked. And I'm going to go through town by town kind of quickly. But, Another thing for me is interesting, right here in New Haven, just north of New, New Haven, ju just north of New Haven is Hamden. And the developer built a 393 unit apartment complex. The canal and the bicycle path goes right by it, so it's called canal crossing. So the developer called me up. He bought 175 books. And if someone buys an apartment complex, He's going to hand him a book for free. <laughs> I, I went along with that, that's fine. Uh, he remains at Lock 14 in Hamden, Connecticut. Route 10, this is Lock Keeper's house. This is the railroad path, or now the, the bicycle path. And the lock is right here. Again, I'm not sure about the visibility of it all. But you can go Route 10, park behind the Lock Keeper's house park your car and walk to this point or bring your bicycle to this point. And you can bicycle all the way down to New Haven or head north. Again, I'm not sure. Can you, way in the back, can you, can you see this? can see over there. It's okay. Chester's the next town up. My book takes the reader along these, this road. They just opened up this whole section in Cheshire. So now you can go from the Farmington Cal Park to Lock 12, all the way north again. So little by little, each town is connecting the railroad and the bicycle paths, to, paths together. And it's funny, not funny, but each town has their own advocacy groups who that they sponsor this. They'll, they help develop it, they help get funds with it, and they help clean it up. They ride their bicycles, uh, trash or whatnot, they pick up trash and they, and they repair things. But the Farmington Lock and that park, Lock 12, is interesting. It's a bona fide park. The cover of my book <coughs> is a takeoff of the park. What they did is they reconstructed the, the, the lock system. The lock keeper's house is there, and there's a museum there, and they have a nice big parking lot. A significant thousands of people use this bicycle path all the time. Anytime in the summertime, you see families hiking, kids. Boy Scouts hiking, kids walking and whatnot. 
It's a very popular place in Connecticut. This is an example of lock 12. This is all reconstruction. It doesn't work. It's a static uh, lock system. You don't see anything like this at all on the whole route of the 80 miles until you get to Southampton, Mass. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Next town up is Southington. They just connected this section, but at this point here, you have to get on Route 10, I'm sorry, Route 9, on the highway, and go all the way to Farmington, uh, because they're developing the, the bicycle path. They just extended this in Lazy Lane. Of interest, this is the bike path. My book takes you here onto Route 10. Again, this lazy lane, they just extended this part. But if you look over here, anybody going to New York City down 91 onto Route 84 will probably travel Route 84 this way. The canal itself was destroyed effectively by Route 84. So what do we have is a canal here, Route 84 here, and a bicycle path on a railroad over here. In Lock 7, in Southington, the next lock, Lock 8, is in Granby, Connecticut. So 26 miles of relatively flat water, no locks. Plainville, as mentioned before, in Plainville, this is Route 10, this is the railroad, and they eventually, and this is the canal, and they eventually will connect this. As I mentioned before, they're dealing with the Pan Am Railroad, trying to figure out how to that run the bicycle path next to the, the railroad. But the fact is the the Pan Am Spur ends about here. From this point all the way to Westfield, there's no active railroad at all. Westfield has a, a Pine Valley Railroad, a little spur. Now, try to go back one. Down here is Norton Park, another nice place to park your car. It's a very large park, but they have actually the canal is there. It's full of water, and what I did for my watercolor is there's a bridge that goes here. I stood on a bridge, and the water is this is the canal, this is the park. So I just put the canal boat in the water, and that's that's where it is. <laughs> now Plainville Historical Society, the second floor. Ruth Hummel passed away a few years ago was a canal enthusiast. I mean, she was really uh, into the canal and the history of it. So on the second floor of the Plano Historical Society, they have all kinds of pictures and, and items related to the canal. On the weekends, I believe the, the Historical Society is open for visitors. Farmington, they just opened up this section across Route 6. So what we have is a bridge now going across Route 6, so you don't have to cross a busy highway. The, the railroad, as well as the uh, bicycle path, goes this way. So in Farmington, in my book, I have two routes. The easy route going on the bicycle path. However, the canal goes this way. So I give two sets of directions. If you want to follow the, the Bonafide Rail Trail, but if you want to follow the canal route, you can do it also. You can bike the canal route? It's a, it's a road. It's on Route 10. It's, it's not a, a protected bike path. But there is a uh, Aqueduct Historical Society right here after Route 10. You can park your car and walk in, and they have the canal and they have the towpath. But you got to remember, the, bike, the canal is here, but the bike path is way over here. Now, this is one of my watercolors of the aqueduct crossing the farm the river. This was taken in 1868 by Carl Clauser. It shows you the, the foundations for the aqueduct across the Farmington River. However, the, the flood of 55, all kinds of uh, trees <coughs> and things backed up against the foundation to create a very big dam. So it flooded the various communities that went now, so the Army Corps engineers just tore everything down. So this does not exist there. The only thing that exists is a foundation. So you can park your car, 
walk along the uh, canal, you walk down the Farmington River, and you, you, you see part one foundation that still exists. Avon Historical Society, on both sides of Route 44, they have a plaque. You can't read this, but in 1829, etc., the Farmington Canal, they talk about the canal. But both sides of Route 44, they have this uh, stone uh, monument. Next town up is Simsbury. Simsbury did an outstanding job in uh, promoting bicycling. Uh, every year they have bicycle thons, they do all sorts of things there in terms of the community to promote bicycling and hiking on the, uh, the, the, the trail. And they also have the Old Canal Way. This is again one of my watercolors, Old Canal Way, but the canal boat in the canal. But, this is a picture of me and my bicycle. But this is the old canal way here, with the water in the canal. This is the towpath. If you, on, in Simsbury, 200, uh, 200 Hot Metal Street, you can drive down and park your car and see a, a canal. This whole length of 80 some odd miles, there are actually very few places where you can really see the, the canal. And that's by talking to Westfield, with the interest of folks there is that. I spent a lot of time detailing where the canal was in Westfield. Again, a lot of people don't even realize, even though the canal is there, that there is a canal there. East Granby, you see a little jog here? So it's a nice paved bike path. The railroad going this way, the canal kind of goes this way, but you got to leave the bicycle path and go on the street. Well, it's well marked to get back in because there's a nursery right here. They don't want a bicycle path through their nursery. So you can't, you got to stop and get on the street and come back. But in uh, Granby, in Granby Park, let me go back one. It's Granby Park. My book has you park here at the park. They just opened up a parking place at the, right here at Route 189 in East Granby. Park. In Salmonbrook Culvert in the, in the Cranbrook Park, they did have this uh, culvert back in 1933. It existed. So this is the water. The canal boat crosses over the top of this uh, culvert. Again, in the 1955 flood, all kinds of trees and logs backed up here. So the Army Corps engineer just tore everything down. It's all gone. What they have now is, uh, you can see it here. There's a overpass over the Salmon Brook, where you can just bicycle. Uh, you don't have to kind of worry about Salmon Brook or crossing it. Uh, East Granby Railroad Station. Granby, the uh, railroad and the bicycle path goes this way. Here's Route 189, or Route 20. I don't know if you ever get down this way, 20210. A lot of people in Westfield, Southwick. Granby would take 20 to go to uh, Bradley Airport. But right at this point here, there are six locks. So this down here is lock six. 26 miles in Southington is lock seven. So again, there's no, nice flat water between Southington and uh, Granby, Connecticut. One of my, the watercolors, I'm trying to demonstrate the six locks. To get up to this point here, this is 220 feet above sea level of uh, Congamon Lake. <coughs> so you have all these lock systems to get you up to Southwick and Granby, uh, Congamon Lake. Uh, this is off Congamon, this is Suffield. There's a guard gate right here. This in blue is uh, Congamon Lake. This is a very nice bicycle plant that highly used. There's a guard gate here to prevent water from leaving or spilling out of Congamon Lake. Today, the bicycle path runs this way here. It is a steel and cast and a concrete uh, lock, if you will, or gate or dam, preventing water from leaving Congamon Lake. Southwick. Another plug for the Red Riding Hood restaurant, which is right here. They've sold 
It's a restaurant that's right on the rail trail. And they've sold 90 books so far. <laughs> Pretty neat. Get, all the, I don't get anything for this. All the money goes to Southwick Historical Society. However, these signs that I were talking about, two signs are given to Southwick Historical Society to the, the uh, town of Southwick. And this is a, the first plaque in October 2018. This is uh, Ruth Preston. She's the president of the Southwick Historical Society. And these various people are the Southwick Historical Commission, Department of Public Works, the Selectman, Carl Walter is right there, I'm standing right here. But this is what the, the money goes for. A aluminum plate, both sides, along with a uh, galvanized pipe. Now, once you're up to Southwick, Conwan Lake, you have to get down to Westfield. There's a whole series of locks. This happens to be locks one through six. And here, way up here, Dr. Carl Walter is showing me different places. So he took me down, we walked into the woods, snipped through some people's property and whatnot. And I turned around and I looked up, and what they had done is they had cut into the side of the mountain, this, this cut, if you will. So here, again, you're 220 feet above sea level, except none of this exists, except in my mind, because, again, the 1955 flood wiped out everything. We're in Westfield. From downtown Westfield to the uh, Westfield River, this fall they're going to open up another section of the uh, bicycle path. So effectively, from this point all the way down to New Haven, except in Plainville, it's all well marked, well paved, and well kept bicycle path for hiking, biking. Then you have to get up these locks to get to Southampton. Now, when I give these presentations, because the canal leaves the bicycle path in Southwick, comes back in Westfield, I'm hoping someday they're going to put some markers to show exactly where the canal picks up the railroad line or the, the bicycle path. But I'm proposing these, these kind of a marker. They have something like this in Southington to mark exactly where the railroad is and the bicycle path and some other historic things. Southampton. In Southampton, there is no, there is no bicycle path at all. My book takes one on side streets to get to the Manhattan Rail Trail in East Hampton. Of course, one can always just go on Route 10. But because this bicycle path, in many cases, is a family kind of thing, I always try to steer, steer people away from Route 10 because it's a busy highway. Now, I'm going to jump. In Southampton, there's Lyman and Elder Lock 22. This was in existence back in 1839, time frame 18. 30. This was a storehouse and a lockkeeper's house. And you have to remember way back then, they didn't have trucks, didn't have, you just had dirt roads that are rutted. And the only way you can get supplies into Southampton, for example, or Westfield, is either the Westfield River or Connecticut River, or back roads. So when the, the canal came through here, this, indi this individual, they would store everything from nails to glass to molasses to lumber, coal. It was a really a big deal. But this part of the canal lock still exists. So what I did, went back to my watercolors. The lock keeper's house is still there. This side of the lock is still there. So I just fabricated in my mind this side of the lock system and put a canal boat in along with a few horses. <laughs> Now, again, I don't think you can see this, but Dr. Carl Walter is standing here, and he was trying to show me. Here is the stone foundation of the lock system, but there's an indentation here. So as the gates opened up, they would go inside the lock system, because the, this, these uh, locks are only 11 feet wide. And you couldn't allow the gates to protrude on the inner, inner part of the uh, locks, they had to go inside the walls. So he was just demonstrating to me how that worked. But there's still railroad tracks. So we have the railroad tracks in the, the canal, but you don't have a bicycle path in Southampton. 
Next town up is East Hampton. East Hampton has done a very good job of uh, keeping the rail trail open. Uh, it's the Manhattan uh, Rail Trail. Now, getting back to Westfield's 350th anniversary. The Professor Dodge, a history professor at Westfield State, asked me to write an article about the canal in Westfield. I didn't really want to bore people, so what I decided to do was talk about the Interstate Canal the way it is today. And in Westfield, the only things that places that you can actually see the canal is when it goes through wetlands or side of mountains or hills. The rest of it, downtown Westfield, is gone. Uh, the railroad took it all over in terms of the right of way. So what I try to do is describe to people where you can actually park your car and walk across fields or walk into the woods and actually walk on the towpath or see the canal because there are still parts that exist. Then I do give a, a history of the canal. So this summer there will be an article uh, from Westfield State about the canals in Westfield. Now if you're interested in the, the canal in South Hadley, Westfield State University, they do have a, an excellent article about David Bell. So you can Google Westfield State University, the Historical Journal of Massachusetts, and pick up this article. It's a well-written article about the canal in South Hadley. Now, I was just going to kind of briefly describe my book as it is in Northampton. So what I have is a map. Each chapter has a map. I don't think you can see it here, but I'm trying to show this is the Connecticut River. This is Hadley. This is Honeypot Road. This is where UMass has their uh, sculling station, their rowing station. This is Route 9 going across the Connecticut River here, and this is Route 91. So this is the basis, like in New Haven, for canal boats to marshal, load, unload. North Afton had the same kind of marshaling area and across from for Hadley. So I don't know the total impact of Hadley in terms of the traffic here in the canal, but fortunately Northampton and Hadley had two canal systems filtering in boats along the Connecticut River, or to the Connecticut River. Now, my maps have a legend. I do, <coughs> each chapter, I do my research. There are 16 uh, towns. There are 18 different bicycle path names. I chose the New Haven, Northampton Canal Greenway, quite frankly, because nobody else had it. I didn't have to worry about being copyrighted or being sued or anything like that. But Northampton Bike Path, the Manhattan Rail Trail, I talk about, I show the route, I show the distance to Northampton is six miles. My book stops at the border. I try to find a convenient <coughs> place at the border of each town so we can work our way north. There are two, in Northampton, just like in uh, Westfield or in Farmington, they have two routes. One route is the rail trail, the way it exists now. But if somebody wanted to ride a bicycle to figure out where the canal was, they have a second set of instructions to show people who are interested uh, so they could walk, hike or ride their bicycles along the canal. So I have instructions, uh, a trailhead, a beginning and an end. Then I have little arrows, left, right, you go so many miles, such and such a street. So I try to guide everybody street by street to, uh, along the the trail, if you will. Then I have a little bit of history of Northampton, each town. I have a, a history of the canal in each town. I have a, a little bit of history of the railroad in each town. Then I have a watercolor of each town. This happens to be the canal basin in the Connecticut River, which I commented about a few times here, and again the watercolor. Then I'll talk a little bit about rail trail excursions. In the back of each chapter, I take folks from New Haven going north. But say you want to go south. So we start in Northampton and work our way down to New Haven. Your instructions to go both ways. This they just opened up. This is the Union Station right here in Northampton. They just opened up a section. Uh, a four and a half, four point four million dollar uh, project put the bike path 
under the railroad tracks. Now when I wrote my book, you'd ride your bicycle and somebody cut a hole in the train the fence, and you'd take your bicycle and drag it through the fence and across the tracks and go on. So you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, it wasn't me, I'm just saying. <laughs> it wasn't me either. No, in, oh, but I, one thing I forgot to talk about. How did I get interested in this? As I mentioned before, I graduated at Westman High School in 61. And I'd catch a bus, and, but I, every day I'd walk across the canal to catch a bus. But I didn't know about it. It wasn't until maybe 30 years later I attended a lecture by Dr. Carl Walter at Westfield Library. And he was talking about the canal in Westfield. I said, the canal went right next to my parents' house. With vines and water and beer cans and stuff, mm -hmm. nobody cared about it. So it dawned on me, you know, bulldozers would come in, they knock it down and build houses. I said, what a shame. Nobody knows that a canal existed. So I said, well, you can write a book, but in reality, a book could be boring. I mean, okay, the canal is 20 feet wide at the bottom, 34 feet at the top, minimum of 4 feet of water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then it dawned on me. We got a bicycle path now where the canal was. So one thing led to another, and that's how I came up with my book about a bicycle path that follows the historic canal. But a lot of people don't realize that the canal existed from New Haven to Northampton. Even like myself, you can live right next door to it and be totally clueless. So to summarize, we have North ha New Haven and Northampton. Eventually, you're going to go to Boston from Northampton, a bicycle path. This is the end of my talk. This is the bridge that goes over the Connecticut River. And thank you very much. Hardcover and softcover. You take any questions? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, questions, sure. I always forget to do that, by the way. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your interest in putting up signage. But there is a signage already on in Southampton. There is yes. In Northampton, oh, East Street. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. In Northampton, there's a sign that recognizes the canal toll house and the canal that was there. And a lot of the people in this room know where the Academy of Music is. They know where Edwards Church is. They know where St. Mary's is. If you cross the street from the Academy of Music to St. Edward's Church and wait for the walk oh, I know exactly. When you walk right. over, hidden inside, in the bushes, ahead, right? <laughs> ahead yeah. inside the bushes, yeah. is a sign <laughs> that tells the people, the passerbys, that they'll read it, that that right. was where the toll house was for the canal that is that canal all along State Street. You're absolutely right. Thank you for bringing that up. Why not put your sign right there? I could, but it's up at the Northampton Historical Society. I've tried to reach out a few times to them at the Forbes Library, and so far nobody's ever contacted me. So, but 2025, it's two centuries have passed since they started the canal. I'm going to start all over again. Of course, the whole idea. But thank you for bringing that up. We could cut the head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, who funded the building of the canal? Uh, the Farmington Canal Company. Shareholders. Right. Basically, the state of Connecticut, as well as the state of Massachusetts, gave the canal companies the right to take over whatever property they wanted by eminent domain and put it wherever they wanted. And the farmers and the homeowners had no choice. Do you know if they used slave labor? No. A lot of Irish laborers, though. Or local laborers. <laughs> the same. <laughs> Seriously, that's just the way it was. Like, it was just like in a railroad. But no, no slave labor, no. Yes, sir. So how did they collect revenue? Tolls. At the locks? Or? At the locks, yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know which locks, but it was purely tolls. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, that's the only way to fund the repair of the canal itself was through tolls. But you've got to remember, it's Route 10. It's all dirt road. And people also had tolls. If you were riding your horseback or a carriage going north on Route 10, you had to pay a toll. But you had, if there were no bridges either crossing many streams and rivers and it was muddy and all that stuff, it's through tolls. Yes, sir. How did it get through Northampton? I've always, I mean, I'm an amateur historian, but I've always been fascinated how it got from Veterans Field, which is, you can see it there, the, and then it goes out to Old South Street, I believe, and then down State Street. Let me just kind of go back here. I'm trying to. 
So this is Northampton. We started at the train station. Yeah. This is downtown. Right. This is the river. I'm trying to. You, you're talking about the, the Veterans Field, is that it? That's where, the, yeah. And then it somehow it goes up. That's, down. Here's the Veterans Field right here. Right. So the canal pretty much falls Route 10. Yeah. It's the best I can describe. It's all gone. Yeah. Well, the river yeah. changes. And it was, yeah. there was a brook here from my research somewhere. There was also a brook in this general vicinity. I don't know what happened to the brook, whether it's been buried or not. It was rerouted. So, uh, rerouted? Yeah. So it, the, the canal ends in Northampton. It doesn't go in further. It ends in Northampton. But, I'm glad you brought this up. The ultimate plan was to go all the way to St. Lawrence River. Wow. And that, that was the plan. In Canada? In Canada, all yeah. the way up. Yeah. <laughs> now, to start this out, there were locks, if you will, in Connecticut River locks. But they were not going to use Connecticut River locks to go to Canada. So, they were going to have their own locking systems. So the Erie Canal was kind of contemporaneous with this? Mm -hmm. they, they built the Erie Canal first and finished it. Then the same engineers came over to Connecticut and Massachusetts and they designed the canal system. And if you ever walk this, it's amazing. How in the world two centuries ago did they figure it out? Mm -hmm. You know, horseback and whatever. I don't know how they did it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, how they did it. How did the Romans do what they did two years ago? They figured it out. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> My, I'm interested in the water supply for the canal system. It sounds like Congamon Lakes were a water supply. No, in fact, two major sources for water. One is the Westfield River up in Warnoco, Russell, okay. where the Warnoco Dam is. Okay. That's a feeder line from there. So they had an aqueduct coming down. They had a ditch, if you will, to funnel money from water from the Westfield River to Southampton. And at Southampton, it went north to Northampton and south into Westfield. The other major source is the Farmington River in Connecticut. But otherwise, it had little streams and whatnot. And they did have droughts where it dried up. They did have mean-spirited people that would break, the, break in and drain the water out of the canal. Things happened. Of course, a lot of this, just like Route 91, went through people's property, they went through farmland and whatnot. The same thing as the canal and the railroad. People were upset. The, the aqueduct, the one that was, was it destroyed in the 55, and now we said it's not there anymore. Yeah. Um, were those entirely masonry? And the Romans used to line some of theirs with lead sheets. Yeah. Does anybody this know? This was this was just stone foundations. Right. And wood. And wood. That's just purely wood. It huh. did, did not last very long. Right. They didn't have right line it with lead or anything else. Maybe they used clay, but that was it. But it rotted real quick, and it became very expensive after 10 or so years. So there was, yes. no, there was no, nothing in Hadley, but you mentioned a basin or a staging area for the for the canal boats in Hadley, or was it just in Northampton? Well, it was in Northampton. I mean, the Lock 32 ended in Northampton, but right across from where it ended is uh, Honeypot Road, which is the field now. So I'm in, sure the Hadley. Honeypot in Northampton. Pardon? The Honeypot in Northampton, not Hadley. In Hadley. In Hadley. In Hadley. Okay. In Hadley yes. And but in terms then? of where the dockage was in Hadley, I haven't a clue. But there was all open water. Uh, there had to be a, a dockage somewhere in Hadley. Had to be. So the, bo the boats that were going to go down the canal would kind of stage there? And but they would stage in Northampton where the uh, UMass <coughs> sculling or uh, uh, rowing launch is, if you will. It's right there. You can drive. I have not done that yet, but if it's paved now. You can drive down there and look at it. Okay. Yes, sir. How did they skirt the Great Oxbow? They went west. Well, they went west of it. They didn't. Even, they didn't even go there. In many places, the canal did not go into water except for Conemaugh Lake. They had to go higher than some of these lakes, so the streams would fill, funnel down and fill up the canals. So they skirted the Oxbow. They didn't even go close. Okay. I could go back and. No, nope, that's fine. Okay, well, I could go back and show you, but it skirted, it didn't even go into the Connecticut River there. Well, why I haven't a flat site there, but, well, of course, they wanted to go downtown Northampton, because it's a city. Are there any prints of your watercolors? No, I don't, I, I don't sell anything. I do have, I do give prints, numbered prints, historical societies along the route. I don't 
charge it all for the watercolors. They just gift them. So we are they at various places, various historical Well, for society? example, the Westfield Library Museum on the second floor, I gifted to them a numbered copy. There's also one that uh, the State House, uh, local senator in Westfield has one hanging in the State House. But again, I don't charge for the paintings. I never have. I have other marine watercolors home. I just give them away. <laughs> I have no interest in the. Uh, uh, people say I should sell these, but I, I just give. But mainly for libraries and historical societies. Yes, I'm sorry. But so if you get on your bike in Northampton, and then you said it's not all the way can you actually now ride all the way to New Haven? Are there uh, signed. You, from, from North it's not completed, are there signed routes to go? No. Get back on from trail. Northampton, you got to go to Southampton, East Hampton border. The Manhattan Rail Trail ends there. Then you got to follow my book, or get a Route 10, to get all the way to Westfield, across the Connecticut, on the Westfield River. At that point, you get back on the rail trail, a bona fide, well-marked rail trail, and go all the way down to Farmington. As you get to Plainville, there's a little section we go, got to go back on street. Then you go all the way to the Yale campus. And so your book has has shown an alternative road. Route Absolutely, yes, yes. And is that is that marked on road or not? Yeah. Uh, the trail the trail is marked, yes, except where it goes on the street, okay, so like in Southampton. You have to now. I don't. I have a few maps here, which I can give you. I'm a member of the uh, the Farmington Valley. Or the trail folks, they do have maps they give away for free from New Haven to Granby, and then they stop. I've been trying to get these folks to why not go all the way to Northampton? But for some reason or other, different state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've traveled to Connecticut for 30 years, and I've probably the jet engine people. To me, there is no border. I've been going back and forth for all these years, and I have a sailboat along the sound, I go back and forth. In fact, mm -hmm. I got a little bit of a tan because of the wax on the side of the boat. <laughs> but to me, there's no border. But to a lot of people, the jog in South Southwick went back and forth. If you look at Mass the map of Massachusetts, you see this little yeah. protrusion. Well, that's been going back and forth to Connecticut and Massachusetts early on in the colonial times. That, you know, so the, they have this thing. But now they have a toll road. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I do have a few of these. For one. Yes? I have a question about the lock system. Um, so the locks were powered by the water. Yes. Right? The water wasn't pumped. There was no yeah. electricity. I have everything downhill. Um, how long would it take a boat to go down those six locks? Like in, in West well, roughly just four minutes to drain the water off quickly. But uh, you can four go minutes from, for each lock. Yeah. Oh, four minutes, yeah. That's, that's what I read. doesn't sound like a lot, but I guess they could have. They weren't wide, though. They, they were like 11 feet, 6 inches wide, the locks. The boats themselves are about 11 feet. So there wasn't a lot of water there. But you could go from New Haven to Northampton within 24 hours. That was the trip. Now, just think if you had to go by the uh, covered wagon or walker or something like that. It's got way back when, 18... 1800s. There wasn't railroads or uh, buses or anything like that. It was hard getting to the interior. Right, I've operated a lock in Maine on a small river, and you get to jump out of the boat and <coughs> turn the giant handles and swing the door shut. And I am sure they had really the whole thing. It's it's really great. Now, Dr. Carl Walter, who has the maps, who I <coughs> talk with about the canal, is building a uh, well, an aqueduct over the Farmington River, exact model. By the way, just, just another comment. When I wrote the book, I did not ask the bicycle folks for their point of view, their interest. I didn't ask the railroad buffs, you know, like uh, the big eastern states. Every year they have this big railroad show. I didn't ask the bicycle people. I didn't ask the railroad people. I didn't ask uh, uh, historical societies, their local selectmen or mayor. I was afraid that everybody would have their own spin on it. So I wrote the book, and they say, okay, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And please remember, there's books for sale up there. Hardcover, uh, soft cover. Thanks a lot.